Good evening. Tonight, the football world was stunned by the shock news that after only seven weeks in the job, Brian Clough has been sacked as manager of Leeds United. It's been claimed that the footballers passed a vote of no confidence in him, and certainly today, the board took the shock decision that Clough must go. Tonight, on this live calendar special, we're talking not only to Brian Clough himself, but also to the man that he succeeded as manager of Britain's most successful football team, to Don Reeve, the England manager. But Brian Clough, first of all, Brian, what's your reaction to being booted out in this fashion? Oh, it's a very sad reaction. Obviously, to be sacked, as you profoundly put it, and the only way you could put it, is a very sad one. It's a very sad one for me personally, and I also believe a very sad one from Leeds Football Club's angle and from the Leeds City. Do you feel that you were given a chance in the job? Well, seven weeks is hardly a long time to be given a chance in any job. I would hope that uh, Mr Revy would get a lot longer time in his job. Well, you began with very high hopes. We talked on a programme here only a few weeks back. When did you first realise that it wasn't going to work out? Oh, I didn't realise it at all. I was always convinced, right up until tonight, that it was going to work out. It was inevitable. To replace the best manager on record, or by record, in the Football League, then obviously Leeds had to get somebody that was, you know, slightly special. I don't want to be blasé, conceited, but I'm not sure who they could have got to improve on uh, his record. You were the best man for the job, you thought? I believed I was, and obviously the Leeds board did. Well, why didn't it work out? What was the main single thing that went wrong? Results. In seven weeks, you know, there, are not, there, there is not a lot of time to become established. When you've taken over a job of a man that's been there 10, 15 years, and he's been regarded as the kingpin, as the father figure, as the man that made everything tick, then within seven weeks, it is impossible, utterly impossible, to replace that type of thing. If the results had gone a bit better, then obviously it would have been easier. But due to circumstances, due to the fact that there were inherited suspensions and little Billy was sent off and banned for a long time, and uh, Paul Madeley's injury and that type of thing, you know, the results weren't as good as should have been. OK, well, let's turn to Don Reeve. Do you consider that you were, in fact, it was, in fact, possible to step into your shoes to replace you? Being very, very honest, I think it would be a very difficult job for anybody to do. But I do feel um, that, that the players at Leeds United um, that won the championship last year to possibly go on and do things this year. Well, was Brian Clough the man that you would have now, picked to succeed me, you? Now, let me, Austin, Austin, don't start jumping the gun. You ask me a question, I'm going to answer it. I think the players were there um, to do the job. Now, whether after six matches um, they're going to be judged on six matches, uh, I don't know. But all I can say is that I was with these players, most of them, for 10, 11 years. I was manager for 13 and a half, and I basically think that they're good enough to win a trophy this season. Last season, we had an awful lot of injuries and suspensions, and we played without four and five and six players right from the very first match. I knew the players. Clough, as he calls me, Revy, didn't know them. And I knew how to handle them and how to juggle them about, and he didn't have time to do that. But the players are there, and they're dedicated professionals, and I had no trouble with them for 13 and a half years. Well, in saying that the team was good enough, you're making an implied criticism of Brian Clough. Do you think Brian Clough was the man for the job? That is entirely Leeds United's director's opinion. What's your personal opinion? My personal opinion, as I stated at the time, before Brian took the job, I won't call him Clough because I wouldn't um, take him down like that because I think, I think it's a sad night um, for anybody to get the sack as a manager in any football, in any, any job. Um, nobody likes to see this happening in football at all. Um, I openly stated, before anybody took the job, when I took the England job, that I felt that Johnny Giles was the man for the job. Only because he knew our system, he knew how I worked, he knew how the staff worked, he knew how the players reacted to things. He knew everything, because he travelled all over Europe with us, he played in matches, a great player, a great thinker of the game, and I recommended him to Leeds because... But if I can interrupt there, does that mean that he was going to carry on in the Revy tradition, that he was going to be a manager much as you've no, been? No, I felt... Well, Tottenham must feel that because they, they've taken Terry Neal, but the, he was in an interview for the last two or three for the job at Tottenham. Now, I've never talked to Bill Nick about him. But Johnny Giles, I felt, he's proved it with error. He went to Brazil with them and did well. He played in South America, he's done well with their team. I only passed a personal opinion. Whether Leeds United directors wanted to take it or not was entirely up to the Leeds United directors. I could only recommend him for the job. They didn't take him. They went for Brian. 
So I can't do any more than that. Well, would, would, uh, what, in effect, I read in that is that you weren't the right man to step into this legacy that uh, Don Revere had no, left no, at no, least. No, 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 Austin. No, 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 no. You were totally out of order there. What you take out of that is totally untrue. What I said, that I recommended Johnny Giles for the job before anybody else was recommended at all. Before anybody's name was mentioned, I recommended Johnny Giles for Leeds United's job. Well, apart from your own respect for your own abilities, Brancroft, would you say that you were the right man to step into the kind of legacy Don Reeve had left? Uh, that's a very difficult question. It's like saying, you know, if religion goes out of, um, out of our way of life, who takes over but it's from religion? That your style is very different from his style. My style... To play as used to Don Reeve's style, it might have been upsetting. My style's not different at all in the sense that I wanted success and I believed I could deliver it and my methods... 99% or 90% the same as uh, Mr. Revy's. My style was exactly the same. Management is 90% uh, right throughout the country, irrespective of who the manager is. It's the extra 10% that's a special bit. But look, over the years, Leeds United have been run almost like a family, like sons of Don, of Don Revy. Now, didn't you, in fact, go in and upset them, unsettle them, by going in for a big buying policy? Well, a big buying policy, I'm not sure. What I did was I bought a... Um, a wing half to replace Eddie Gray, who there's grave doubts about his future. I was informed when I took over Leeds that Mick Jones could possibly not be fit for the rest of the season at the very earliest, February or March. So I bought a reserve centre forward in John O'Hare, and all of Leeds know he is a very talented player. Now, what I also did was I tried to provide a little bit of striking power added to Leeds' machine as I once called Don's team, he wasn't very happy with it, but it was a machine, superbly machine, uh, and a superbly oiled one, but it was a machine. And I added Duncan McKenzie to it because I knew up front we were a little bit thin with Peter Lorimer, Joe Jordan and Alan Clark. So the fact of big buying wasn't big buying in the you sense... You don't think it was unsettling for the players? Oh, it could have been slightly upsettling because they've been there so long. And one or two of them are getting on to 32, 33, possibly even 34. OK, well, Don Reeve, would you have gone, for, uh, have gone in for this kind of buying? Or would you have worked it in more cautiously? Well, first of all, let me answer Brian's question um, in, in, uh, about them getting old and about injuries and one thing or another. Um, as I said already, we had this all last season. But what you must remember is this, that that team... Um, was written off by the press and television in 70, when we missed three, three tournaments, in 71, in 72, and in 73, when we lost against Sunderland and AC Milan, they all said, that's it. They're finished, they're over the hill, they're too old, and this, that, and the other. And last season, with all these injuries and all these suspensions to Alan Clark and Norman and all these people, we only lost four matches out of 42 and won the championship. And there went 29 matches from the beginning of the season without defeat. Well, are you saying in that that Brian Clough's no. buying was not necessary? No. Austin, will you Hang just on. please that give me a chance? That was incredible. Will you what just the man please? Said OK, was well, let, 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 let him finish. Right? Yes. Now then, if Brian felt after three months, I would have given them personally three months to settle down and play as they're capable of playing. Don, even with Billy's. Eight-match eight suspension? Yes, I'd have had Terry Yorroth, I'd have had Mick Bates, I'd have had George Jordan, I'd have had Frankie Gray. He had four no. very world-class players there in the making. No. Who I juggled Gray. about last year. Yeah. Frankie Gray, whether you think Frankie Gray's a good player or not. Well, world-class, you said. Frankie yeah. Gray. Well, I think world-class, if he got the chance, Brian, I think he could be world-class. Yes. And I think that I played Terry Yorroth up front. This is what I'm saying. You didn't get the chance to see them. I knew them. I played Terry Yorroth up front alongside George Jordan. I played Terry Yorroth midfield. I played him at full-back. I played him at sweeper. I played Mick Bates up front, I played Frankie Gray up front and outside left. Now, these players, I felt, should have had a chance. Yes. Um, possibly, where, possibly, Don, where possibly, didn't they get a chance? Terry had... Uh, no. Terry had a, a, a tummy bug, enteritis, I think they call it, and he was out. He was in bed for ten days. Yeah, but he still had Mick Bates and George Yarden and Frankie Gray who didn't play at all, Brian. And the who? thing is, Mick Bates... Yes, I'm sorry. Terry Orth and Frankie Gray. Yeah. Now... I feel that the unsettling part came when he didn't give these lads a chance, and quite rightly, a man's got to stand or fall by his decisions. Oh, yes. Every time, whether he's going to buy, whether he's going to have team selection, whether he's going to have, he's got to stand or fall by what he says and what he does. And Brian decided to go in the market. Whether it was unsettling to the players, I don't know. 
Well, the, the question then arises, was Brian Clough allowed to stand or fall by his decisions? Was he given time to carry through his policies? Was he given the backing that he needed from the team to do what he wanted? I would prefer you to say the board of directors to that, because the team don't dictate that much. The team can have a vote of confidence or that type of thing. The team are the be-all and end-all regarding the results on the field. Well, the but the, regarding the confidence, it's essential to have the confidence, but the men who make the decisions are directors in football. Well, let's start and with as, the team first of all. Well, because John, are you sure that that team was playing its best for you? Oh, I'm absolutely certain. With results like that? Oh, Bossy. results like that. Of course they were playing Bossy. their best. They well, couldn't do anything me, else. It was second nature to them. Let me, thank you. Let me ask you a question. How long have you lived in Leeds? Five years. Five years. And I've never seen such a disastrous start to the season. But have you ever seen a Leeds United ever team ever, and the present team and starting the offer this season, ever not try? They might have bad times, they might miss open goals, but never ever you accuse or insinuate that a Leeds United side never tried. Because there's never a player going out on that pitch with a white shirt on that's never tried. He might have a bad game, he might miss open goals, he might miss do, do bad things, but never not try. OK, well, I accept that, but there have been claims that there was, in fact, a vote of no confidence or something amounting to that passed by the players. Is that, that was in true. fact, correct? That is absolutely correct. Well, how did you react to that? Oh, I wanted to be sick. Oh, I wanted to be sick. If you had a vote of no confidence with the people you work with, that way I would assume you would react exactly the same. I felt sick. What was the main reason for it, do you think? I don't know what the main reason was. I think, you know, the fact that I didn't have time to get to know them and this type of thing. I do believe, honestly, that whoever had walked in would have had the same thing. Plus the fact that all the other incidentals went against us, i.e. results and that type of thing, which I've already pointed out are the main thing. Well, let's, let's stay with this point of the vote of no confidence. How do you react to players, in effect, passing a vote of no confidence in the manager after such a short period? I honestly feel, knowing Leeds United players, as long as I've known them, they must have had a very good reason to do that. No respect to Brian, I must feel and say what I feel about Leeds United players. They must have had a very good reason to do that. Why? I don't know. I had enough problems on my end with, with the England job. Whatever the reasons, do you condone players acting in that kind of fashion? Doesn't no. it make a manager's job impossible? No, I do not condone players at all doing that in any club. Because I think it's totally wrong and I think Derek is long to listen to it. But I can't understand why the Leeds United players, if, if, if Brian's true what he's saying, if they voted a no confidence vote in you, Brian. Not exactly a vote, but the feeling was there, yes. No, a vote's a very strong word, but the feeling was definitely there. Well, how far was that, that kind of feeling there? Because, uh, in a sense, you've been critical of Don Reavy himself. We had a programme here a few weeks back on which you were implicitly critical of Don Reavy, you said, the Implicitly contracts un 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 unsigned. Now, is that the right kind of line to take to a man stepping into the shoes of a revered manager? Ah, now, if you're asking me now, did I make mistakes, the answer is yes. I am not infallible. I definitely made mistakes. Um, having said that, when you say that I criticised Don Reavy about unsigned contracts, I stated the fact that there were, when I took over, 11 contracts not signed. Now, if it was Don's fault, if it was the chairman's fault, if it was the player's fault, that's immaterial for, for this particular argument. There were 11 contracts not signed. That is fact. Well, Don Reeve, you no, saw that not. programme and the accusation. What was yes. your reaction to it? Yes, and Austin, I phoned up that night. Yes. And asked you if I could face Brian the following night, and um, I got no reply. Um, talking about the 11 contracts that were unsigned, all contracts... Um, were basically agreed in the minutes with the directors of what each player was going to get. Brian, it's possibly right the contracts weren't signed, um, not by 11, I would say by five or six. And all these things were agreed in the minutes that these contracts were agreed and I'd agreed with players. And all players have signed blank contracts for me for 13 and a half years. And I've never had one scrap of trouble ever with one player throughout 13 and a half years with contracts. And why they weren't carried out and signed and sent off by the secretary, I will never know. Well, now, on that same programme, Brian said that there was no warmth in the club. Now, that really shook me. Did I say no warmth? You said no warmth in Leeds United. Now, that was the closest thing that any relationship between players and managers and staff have ever had. Did I, so no, did I say no warmth between no, me and them or no, no warmth in the no club? No, you said no warmth in the club, Brian. I don't remember. If, well, if I did say it, then obviously 
the warmth that you generated between you and the players, that can't be taken away. Never. Th that's ridiculous. Never ever. Can't be taken away. Well, as an experienced manager, Don, Don Reaver, what, what do you think was wrong with Brian Clough's approach to Leeds as a manager? Now, that's asking for me to do something that I know nothing at all about. Um, I've known Brian a long time. Um, what his approach is as a manager, I've never played under him, I've never worked under him. Um, that is impossible for me to answer. You see, you have different styles as managers, and uh, it, it's generally believed, I don't know with what accuracy, that you don't get on particularly well. Now, why is that, Brian Clough? Well, when I was a manager of Derby County, and I was in direct conflict with Don Revy and his lead side, it's natural I didn't get on with him, because invariably they were above us. Um, that's the flipper dancer. Having said that, I believe in a different concept of football to Don. I think. I believe that uh, it can be played... Uh, it can be played a slightly different to the way Don plays it and get the same results. Now, that might, that might be, you know, aiming for utopia and it might, be, might mean being a little bit stupid. But that is the way I am. I'm a little bit stupid regarding this type of thing. I'm a little bit of an idealist. I do believe in fairies, and that is my, you know, outlook. Now, Don's slightly different, and his record proves, over results, that he perhaps is right. But having said that, I want to be like me. Well, Don, Don obviously is, wants is, to be like him. Is this question of style the reason why the two of you don't get on? <clears throat> well, I don't know. I think that, um, truthfully, um, Brian is a fool of himself. I must be very, very honest here. I honestly feel that he's criticised Matt Busby, Bertie Mee, me personally, Norman Hunter, Peter Lorimer, Billy Bramner, Peter Story. He's criticised so many people in the game whose records stand to be, to be, to be seen. He's criticised so many people. This is his style. If he wants to be that style, fair enough. But I think that is totally, totally wrong for the game of professional football. He says about honesty and things like this. But when you talk about honesty, if honesty is going to destroy the game, then you're in all kinds of trouble. I think ah. you're doing the game. I think you're doing the game a great disservice. Yes, I would. In other words, the accusation is that you're trying to shoot your mouth off. About so now, when you talk about, I would let, agree me answer, let me answer his question about, first. Yes, let me answer his question first. He talked about he talked about winning the championships better or, or differently. Our record is there to be seen for eleven years. Yes. Right. The first four to five years, I've always said this. We played for results. The last four to five years, we've been the most entertaining side by crowd entertainment and topping charts with national newspapers and television. All the, also, Don, the disciplinary chart. The disciplinary chart... You topped that. We topped that once. Well, you topped it for the last two or three years. No, 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 that's not, that's not true. Um, it wasn't 100% right, I will agree. Sorry? It wasn't 100% right, discipline, on yeah. the field, and last year we straightened it out. Well, it was, it was, you were yeah. the top. Yeah, yeah. But when you, you see, Brian, when you talk about coming to take the Leeds job and you had all these things and all these worries about stepping in my shoes and one thing and another... Which I had. Yes, you had. But why? Why did you come from Brighton to Leeds to take it over when you'd criticised them so much and said we should be in the second division for this and we should do this and we should do that? Why do you take the job? Well, because I thought it was the best job in the, in the country. Of course it was the best job I in the country. I was taking over the league champions. Yeah, you were taking over the league champions. You were taking over the best bunch of players that you've ever seen. Well, you'll I, ever, you'll... I didn't know about the players, Don. You didn't know I, I didn't know them intimately like you do, but I know you were the league champions, and I was taking over the league champions. I wanted to have a crack at the European Cup this year. Yes. I think that was near and dear to your heart also. Yeah. Yes. Um, I wanted to win it. I wanted to do something you hadn't done. Now, when I said, I think I said it to Trevor Cherry, actually, or mostly the players, he said to me, what can you do that the boss hadn't done? And that you were the boss. Referring to you. And I said, I want to win the league, but I want to win it better. Now, there is no other reply to that question. No, but Because there's... you had won the league. Yeah, but there's no way you could win it better. Why not? Only... No, 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 no. But that's the we only hope we're, I've we're, got. We're only, we're only lost four matches, isn't it? But that, well, and I can I, only lose three. No, 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 no. I couldn't no. give any other answer. And no. I wanted to win the European Cup. I believe that well, it was just a fraction, Don, a fraction. I don't know this because I've not spoken to you, but I believe it was a fraction whether you took the England job or had another shot at the European Cup. That is totally true because I was so involved with the players and, and everybody at Ellen Good Road. lad. Now, I wanted to do that and I want to do it better than you. You can understand that, can't you? Yes, and I think if you said that to our players, 
then you would have got the message across. I couldn't say that to our players, as you say. I couldn't say that to our players just as a bold statement. You see, when I went in there, there was friction. There was unhappiness. Friction? What do you mean, friction? There was unhappiness because you'd gone an unsigned contract. No, no, no. But uh, when you walked hey, in, don't... when you walked in, tell me don't. this, when you walked in, did you have a meeting the first day with them? No. Why? Because I didn't think it was necessary to have a meeting the very first day. So you were taking over as manager of a yes. new club? Yes. And you don't call all your players and your coaching staff and your office staff together? No. And, and introduce yourself and meet them and tell them exactly what you feel and what you want to try and do? Dawn, the first day I walked in, I came back from holiday and I did two hours training with them. Irrespective of what you do... I went I feel... out on the field with right, them. Right, right, you went out on the field. My immediate reaction to any job, the same at the Football Association, I got 70 people together and went to a cocktail party and introduced myself that to them. That is your way. And I talked, and, yeah, but I talked about Ramsey's record. I talked how great Ramsey was. Yes. His record as a professional man. I never got close to Ramsey. He was a cold man. But as a professional man... I think man, you are. As a, a cold man? Yes. Oh, don't ask our players that. But that or they'll laugh the socks down. Well, that's, a, that's, you know, that's opinion. No, well, that's opinion. But, but Alf Ramsey... I thought they did a good job. And yes. I thought it was important to me yes. to introduce myself to everybody in the Football Association offices. You did And I thought it was your duty Don. when you walked into Leeds United's ground. Don. Everybody saying, well, Brian Clough's arriving today. Yes. We'd love to but meet But you him. didn't have a training session. How long did session? you wait then? No, no, no. How long you did you didn't wait? Irrespective of training sessions or anything, the Brian, training sessions didn't mean course. anything your first day. Why? How could training sessions overcome meeting everybody in the club? It couldn't overcome It would have taken you ten minutes to get everybody do. together as a group and say, I'm pleased to meet you. I'm pleased to come to the club I like walked this. into the dressing room and shook hands with Billy Bremner the but very did first you? No, second Brian. No, I don't, no, don't, no, Brian. No, don't, hang on, I did. No, don't edge. Did, why, why didn't you get everybody together? Because I didn't think it was necessary. Why? Because I thought that I would do it more subtly and different instead of having everybody bang, bang, bang. They were all on edge. I was Actually, on edge. So you could have put them at ease. No, hang on. Uh, how? By going in and talking to them. Oh, talk to them? I took the shirts off the backs after they'd finished training. I used to do that. I massaged them on the Thursday Of course. Morning. Well, that was my approach, of course. But you didn't meet everybody the first day. I shook hands and said hello. Met them. Everybody? I, I pr Did you go to the laundry ladies? Did oh, you no. go to the office staff? Oh, no. I'm sorry. Did you go Specific to the groundsman? No, I didn't have time to do that, Don. It was players. You must have had... It only, I shook, I, I, it only I have, takes I have ten minutes. Here because we, we, we're getting towards the end. I want, to, I want to ask, what's your reaction to a board that doesn't back you up, that sacks you after seven weeks? <laughs> I haven't had time to know them either. Just as I believe, I haven't had time to do the job. What's your reaction uh, to the board? My reaction <coughs> to the board is very, very mixed. And my reaction to the board is so... all oh, mixed up. I don't believe they've done Leeds Football Club a service. I don't care whether it's me or whoever it was. I'm talking about a manager. I don't believe they've done football a service. I think they've struck a blow to send us back, you know, back in the dark ages. I think if the Football Association, who employ Mr Revy, sack him if he loses his first match, I think they will set football back 30 years or 50 years. In turn, I believe that uh, Leeds perhaps have done that a little bit also. Manny Cousins was under a lot of pressure. He was my chairman. If he didn't stand up to it as much as he should have done, that's a matter of debate. But he was under a lot of pressure. And he, today... When the final decision was made, and it was a board decision, he then made it right with me regarding a lot of things. As he made it right with well, okay, this before, guy before you go on, Brian for Clough, 15 years. What, what's going to happen now to Brian Clough? Well, a million things are going to happen to Brian Clough. Um, I'm going to have 48 hours or three days or I don't know. I, I think, and I'm not, I'm, please don't think I'm being flippant, I've had many ambitions in life, and one of the ambitions is... And I wanted this when I was manager of Leeds and manager of Derby. I wanted to coach the England youth. I just might apply to this guy. Well, aren't you going to be in a very difficult situation? Because after the argument with Derby, you left Brighton under a cloud, and now this with Leeds. Who's going to, who's going to touch you with a barge pole, as it were? Well, I think many, many people have touched me with a barge pole because the whole country now, including Leeds, and you've heard it in Don's own mouth tonight, I do not think seven weeks... Seven weeks is enough is not enough time to even find out where the local butcher shop is. OK, well, what happens to Leeds United now? What do you see as being their future? Well, obviously, they'll prosper. I hope they'll prosper. Hell, despite the fact they've only been involved with them seven weeks, you've got to hope they'll prosper. I hope everybody in football prospers. 
I hope they go on to win the European but, Cup. Don Revy, what's your feeling about Brian Clough's personal position You tonight? are a terrible how, how do you man feel for, him? for interrupting that. Well, I we're hope coming to the end and I have, I have to interrupt win that. Sorry. the European Cup. What, what, what's your feeling personally about Sorry. Brian Clough's personal situation? Well, that's anybody who's um, been sacked in football, um, you feel a little bit sad for. Uh, but whether Brian's going about it the right way, um, I don't know because I wasn't there. But if Leeds United players have had a meeting with Brian and the chairman, uh, there must have been something totally wrong. OK, well, gentlemen, there we must leave it after what's been a tragic day for Leeds United supporters, of which I number myself one. Gentlemen, thank you very much and good night. <laughs>